Hello and welcome to this preview video on Surface Builder. So let me quickly explain what Surface Builder is. It is a tool for creating interfaces that allow you to send uh, MIDI data to and from uh, various plugins and MIDI ports. Now a simple example of that would be the ability to send chords by just pressing a button within the Surface Builder interface and that could uh, send any amount of uh, complexity of chord to a destination instrument. And as you can see here we're emulating a whole pedal and we're able to uh, transpose those chord pads as they played. And another example is the ability here to uh, have, say, three keyboards and be able to send output to three different instruments uh, at the same time. As you can see, I'm using the hold pedal button to hold uh, the uh, chord on the various instruments. At the top here, you can also see that there's a bunch of uh, buttons for uh, changing the, um, the uh, patch on the fly. Another feature of Surface Builder is the ability to host uh, audio clips and be able to trigger them either manually like I'm doing here or remotely uh, via MIDI uh, messages. And in the next example you can see I have a button object here with a clip attached. In fact it's a whole song. And not only can we play that song back, we can actually uh, add uh, interface objects to control the volume, pan and muting and pause status and everything of that uh, clip. So let's start at the beginning and show you how it works. So when we first run Surface Builder we start off with what is a very deceptively uh, simple uh, interface and at this point we can either load an existing surface or create a new one. Now I'm going to create a new one here and I'm going to go with the defaults it's given me uh, 800 by 300 and I'm just going to create the surface. And you can see here that we have a grid. Now while edit editing we can pinch to zoom and that's very useful if we've got very large grids. And the grid is just a guideline for when we start adding objects to this surface. So let's press the uh, plus button, the add button, and let's add a button to this surface. Now when an object becomes active the uh, object properties window appears. But I'm going to ignore that for now. And I'm just going to drag this object around and if you click the lower right corner we can actually resize an object. The object properties window uh, can be dragged around. We can uh, rename an object and uh, alter its uh, font size if need be. Now one important thing to note about a button object is it can have two states, selected and non-selected. And we can set the colour for a particular uh, state so in this case I'm setting the non-selected state to a kind of a greeny yellow. Now we can uh, enable dual state and then press the uh, the state button and we can toggle to uh, the alternative press state and we can give that an alternative colour. You will notice there that the press state also has its own unique label so you can edit that as well. Now to test an object out we can press the edit button in the lower left corner and the grid disappears and we can test the button object out. Now if we exit back into edit mode and uh, rather than play around with the button I'm going to add a new object by pressing the add button and this time I'm going to add a rotary knob object and I'm going to position and size that. And again, if we uh, if we exit out of edit mode, we can test that button out, and we can see that it's got a range of zero to one two seven, which is obviously a standard MIDI range. Now, if we tap on that, you'll see that uh, the object properties window comes up, and uh, as we flick around from object to object, that object properties reflects whichever object we have selected. Now each object comes in a number of unique styles. Uh, in this case we have a transparent button now. Um, and if you look at the knob object you'll see that there's a lot more complex uh, versions of the knob than the simplistic one we originally started off with. 
um, but uh, yeah we can you can design the interface as you want with whichever style objects you wish now it's also possible to drag transparent PNG files onto the buttons to give them a little bit of extra flavor and the uh, the icon either, can either be above or below uh, the text depending on the uh, the size and shape of the button now in order for these uh, knobs and buttons to be able to control anything we need to turn on MIDI and we do that in the object properties dialog on the right side of that dialog you'll see along the top we have a little selection bar which starts off on note and goes to uh, CC and then PC and then pitch bend and uh, we choose which type of message we want to send now for most message types uh, those three knobs that you can see on display on that right side of the screen control everything you need but uh, if you want to send program change there are an extra two knobs that appear allowing you con to control the bank and sub bank now notice we also have a MIDI learn knob down here and whenever any of these MIDI parameters are changed you, we need to press the save knob to commit them now because this is a preview I'm not going to go over this in detail but uh, suffice to say that you've got all the editing tools you need if I delete that uh, that knob select that button I can put two fingers on the screen and then just simply drag those two fingers to the right and down um, I can duplicate uh, and create arrays of objects so you simply pre-configure the style and colors and then duplicate in that fashion now that duplication process is very useful and to aid with that uh, we have a, a, a margins option within the uh, object properties and it works the same on all objects we can shrink an object and give it a margin so that when we do do the duplication uh, we get everything appropriately spaced now if you remember when we created this button we made it a dual state button and uh, if we go back into the object properties and change that back to a single state you'll see that whenever I click on that button it doesn't change state at all uh, if we put that back to a dual state and uh, we change the grouping of each of these three buttons to be group one um, you'll see that when I go in and test these buttons and press them uh, they mutually exclude each other so only one of the three can be active and it excludes everything in the same group and you get up to 16 groups there now if we find ourselves wanting to add anything to the grid and the grid is too small we can always just come into resize grid here and uh, you're free to uh, expand and contract a grid as much as you want uh, using this uh, this option now while we're at it let's just have a quick look at some of the other options available to us uh, the first of these probably is the fader object now faders can be multiple styles so uh, some we call faders some we call sliders but um, I think if I show you the difference you will get the idea so this would be a slider as opposed to a fader um, let's just have a look at what else there is there Oh, we've we've even got your generic uh, kind of iOS type uh, sliders and there's some nice uh, aluminium ones as well with uh, nice alloy buttons on there next up is the XY pad which can be used to send controller data in fact two controllers to a, destina a destination uh, typically something like volume and pan or cutoff and resonance something like that uh, again we've got various uh, styles and we can control the the backgrounds and border colors uh, and give them nice tints and so on with this object uh, each state has its own MIDI setup so that's how you get the two CC's uh, we've also got text objects which are useful for uh, displaying uh, user uh, content um, we can color those we can add borders uh, we can change the style you know left and right justified and so on and uh, we can change the uh, font size and uh, and what have you uh, the 
image object is next and the image object can uh, uh, you can drag and drop images directly from uh, the filer into here and if we look at the object properties we can change uh, how that works whether it's stretched to fit and so on now you can see here I've got the border turned on we can turn that border off and then you've got a free a free floating image um, so it's quite handy now a simple object here is the light object which can be used to uh, uh, react to incoming data uh, to uh, give control status of a particular uh, CC or note or whatever and uh, finally we got the uh, keyboard object which uh, we can uh, configure to send its output to uh, a destination it might be useful if you want to uh, activate many things at once from a traditional keyboard now i'm aware i've rushed through that quite quickly but the real reason is because i wanted to get to the important things and that is the uh, inbuilt functionality that's available to you uh, when you uh, load uh, the uh, service builder as various types of auv3 so here we have a copy of aum running with a copy of surface builder added to a midi only track now because this is a MIDI track we can't do any audio functionality on a MIDI track but I want to show you the kind of thing we can do. So I'm going to add a button and just resize it and, uh, and open up the object properties. On the right here you'll see two buttons function which pops up a menu of items. Now by default the function is set to send MIDI which just sends whatever configuration of MIDI event that you've got set up. Bulk MIDI would um, allow us to send uh, multiple commands on a button press. But I'm going to uh, select play chord and then I'm going to hit the data button underneath the function button. And we get a little pop up here. And it allows us to configure the button to play any chord. And we can go through setting up the chord uh, name, whether it's major, minor and so on. We can also set the... Um, the octave and the inversion and so on uh, and this is an example of assigning a function to a button that, that sends pure MIDI and then all that's left to do is actually do some routing to make sure that that button uh, gets uh, that redirected to uh, uh, whatever instrument you want to play now as you saw before it's very easy to uh, duplicate that button and quickly just uh, set that up as a say an F major chord or something like that now when you attach a, uh, a copy of surface builder as an instrument um, we uh, we can do a whole lot more things and uh, I'm gonna add a button again here um, and uh, in this case I'm going to make it a extremely wide button then I'm going to uh, go into the uh, functions and I'm going to um, attach the play audio function to that clip and when I do so you'll see that the data button is wanting me to uh, drag a uh, an audio file onto that button so I'm going to open up the files app and just drag uh, an audio clip directly onto that button. I could have dragged it onto the data button as well, by the way. Now when I press that button, it will play that clip. Now because I'm not in edit mode, I can simply drag down on that clip and uh, choose the properties. And here I can choose to display a waveform instead of just a bar that goes across the button as the audio clip plays so the button objects are able to launch particular things but uh, the rotary knobs for instance are more suitable for altering things like volume so if we, if we add a rotary knob and come into the uh, functions we can attach a function uh, to that rotary knob in this case audio clip volume now when I press the data button I get to pick uh, what I want to control the volume of. In this case the, uh, the audio cl clip we dragged onto the uh, button above. Now if we quickly uh, exit edit mode and uh, 
tap on the button, it will start playing the clip and the knob will control the volume of the clip. Now if I uh, duplicate that button, now it's uh, got all the attributes I need. Uh, I can then come in and assign something like uh, stereo width maybe to that button. And uh, now when we exit and play, we can control the stereo width. We can move it all the way over to the left, which is mono, and all the way to the right, which is extra wide. So I think you get the idea there. Uh, the last instance uh, is um, an effect uh, on a copy of Digistix. So uh, the audio from Digistix is passing through a copy of Surface Builder. In this case, uh, there's not a lot we can do here, but uh, I'm going to be adding functionality as we go along. Uh, in this case, I'm going to stick a rotary knob there. And if I duplicate that a few times, I can attach various uh, functions to those knobs uh, to perform uh, some kind of functionality on the audio passing through from Digistix. In this case I've added uh, volume, we've got uh, stereo width and we've got uh, uh, low pass, high pass filter. So now if I start the transport going Digistix will start and we can twiddle the knobs. So I hope you understand that depending on how you uh, install the plugin depends on how it works and what functions are available. And although it's really a MIDI controller, uh, I'm going to be expanding the audio functions uh, as time goes by. Now up until now all the audio clips that I've dragged into uh, uh, Surface Builder are dragged directly onto buttons. And the question is where does that button data go? Uh, if we open up the audio pool from the uh, open windows menu uh, you'll see that we have a, a kind of a file uh, browser here and that file browser contains all the imported files and we can equally well just drag uh, files from here uh, back onto a button. Now that gives us a central point to access any media. But uh, if we were to save this surface file, you'll notice that because it contains media, it's asking us whether we want to compress the audio into the surface file when we save. In that way, it won't be reliant on audio data from the audio pool. The next thing I want to take a look at is scenes. Now these are useful when we have really large interfaces and we can't fit everything on screen. In front of you here you can see that I've got a keyboard and three buttons. Now if I click the scenes button on the left toolbar here we can flick through the six scenes that we can utilize within our surface file. Now if we go to scene uh, A and look at the three buttons at the top of this scene uh, and look at the actual object properties you'll see that they are running a function called switch scene and uh, they are configured to jump to scenes A, B and C. So we don't have to actually switch scenes manually, we can have buttons to do so. And if I come out of, uh, out of edit mode we can see that in action. There is also a floating uh, scenes window which is available from the open windows uh, section and uh, this uh, allows us to select any of the scenes as it, the pop-up menu did. We also have an import button and this allows us to import any uh, single scene surface directly within a scene. So I've just imported that drums surface into scene uh, D of my current surface file. Now each scene can have its own specific size and zoom level if need be. Um, which is very handy. Also if we double tap anywhere on the interface we, uh, we enter presentation mode and the toolbars just fade away leaving us just the interface and we can save uh, a finished surface file in presentation mode and it will load in presentation mode. 
we double tap with two fingers anywhere on the surface we can bring up the uh, the main menu without having to go through uh, coming out of presentation mode now the last thing I want to look at is the ability for surface builder to run in standalone mode now in standalone mode we don't have access to the same ports as we would when we are hosted as an AUV3 under something like AUM instead we have to rely on port mapping now port mapping is simply uh, mapping uh, one to one each of the 16 input output ports with a hardware uh, MIDI interface and we do that by clicking the MIDI mapping button within the object properties dialog now you notice at the top of this interface the uh, Yamaha Bluetooth interface is greyed out meaning that it's not currently connected so if you get this situation uh, simply press on the Bluetooth button and uh, all the Bluetooth devices will pop up connect to them in here and then when we return to the mapping dialog they will be available to map in the uh, in the port mapping now you can see that first option is now not grey and we can click on other items and map them to uh, uh, other MIDI devices in my system so you can see my Yamaha Bluetooth device is mapped to port 1 my Nano Key Studio is mapped to port 2 and my iRig interface is mapped to port 3 now these ports will uh, correspond to the uh, port knob uh, within the MIDI setup of this dialog so setting the output port to port 3 would output to my iRig Pro now to help with that we can always open the main menu and go to show window and open the MIDI monitor now by default this is monitoring input so if we click on the button in the lower left corner we're now monitoring uh, output MIDI output and if we uh, start pressing around on some of these buttons you'll see that they're now registering MIDI output and uh, in some circumstances we actually get the port name that we are uh, outputting to so since we mapped that first yellow button to the iRig Pro when we press that you can see that that's been output to the iRig Pro on port 3 now since I've rambled on for 22 minutes I'm going to call a close to this preview uh, uh, video and we can focus more on the independent features when we do the masterclass videos now if you've seen it all the way to the end a big thank you for for taking the time to to take a look at this uh, this new product uh, hopefully it will be released soon um, don't forget to thumb up the video don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll talk to you soon Three, two, one.